You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is Modern Fitness with your host, Jonathan Ells. Modern Fitness delivers the most current and effective advice and information on health and fitness to help all types of exercisers be the most successful and fit versions of themselves. Please welcome the host of Modern Fitness, Jonathan Ells. This is Modern Fitness, and I am your host, Jonathan Ells, here on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And um, tonight... Um, we are talking about probably the most, no, definitely the most popular in terms of numbers of people that ask me questions and in terms of clients that sit in front of me and say, this is what I want. Um, and that is nothing other than fat loss. Uh, we are talking about fat loss tonight. And particularly, this is Fat loss part two. So I uh, hope everyone's had a great uh, week so far. Hope everyone enjoyed uh, the the episode last week. Um, you know, I'm just saying from my own perspective. I think I'm, I, you know, I, I'm really, I'm the last couple. I really brought my A game. So you know, if, if you guys thought that, I'd love to. I'd love to hear some comments from you guys on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, we got got some comments right now from Instagram, and it, it, I love hearing that feedback. Uh, so anyway, if you guys are loving what I'm doing. Please give me some uh, some notification that you love it. Um, anyway, so oh man, fat loss. Oh my god! Like as a personal trainer, um, fat loss you can either take it and run with it, or you can try to duck and and dodge it like uh, Keanu Reeves in The Matrix. But eventually, you're going to get hit with a bullet. And uh, yeah, the best the best approach is to take it and run with it when it comes to personal trainers for uh, people that want fat loss because it's probably the most universal thing. And um, in episode one of fat loss, which was a couple months ago now, uh, wow, it was wow, quite a quite a bit of time ago now, more than a couple months ago. Um, we talked about basically the exercise side of fat loss and how we can factor exercise into helping our, our fat loss. Um, just to recap a couple things there in terms of myth busting. Is exercise required for fat loss? No, it's not required for fat loss, guys. So you do not need to exercise for fat loss. Can it help? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, it can help. But you do not need to exercise. Um, do you need to go to the gym for fat loss? No, you do not need to go to the gym for fat loss. You can exercise from home. You can exercise outside. You can just simply become more active as a human being because ultimately that's what our bodies are meant to do. Um, and there's, there's other things that we went over like, you know, is there specific styles of training to burn fat? Not necessarily, no. You know, are there specific fat burning exercises? No. No one exercises. It, it, no, it, it can target just fat loss. That's just not how it works. Um, and, yeah, you know, it, it really comes down to what we eat. So, um yeah, so today is going to be more about what we can do and what strategies we can put in place when it comes to our food and our drinks, aka our nutrition. So, um, as I said, uh, just to recap, um, the main thing that we are trying to achieve when achieving when, when getting the fat loss or the weight loss that we want and is achieving 
what's called a caloric deficit. What is a caloric deficit? Well, for those of you who don't know, a caloric deficit is simply consuming fewer calories than our body requires for maintenance. So uh, that that uh, what our body requires for maintenance is often referred to our as our, our metabolism, so uh, or our basal metabolic rate. So what every single person has is a series of chemical reactions that occur within our body that require a different amount of energy, and it varies from person to person. And there's lots of things that can manipulate those those chemical reactions. Um, there's a lot of things that will cause us to require more energy, such as exercise being one of them. Uh, non-exercise activity is another one of them. But ultimately, we need to find a way to achieve a caloric deficit in order to lose weight. If you are doing any sort of strategy right now and you're not losing weight, it 98% of the time, it means you're just simply not achieving a caloric deficit. Now, there are other small little factors we're not going to get to today, uh, but ultimately, that's what it means. It means that if you are doing things right, you should be losing weight. All right? Simple as that. If you are not losing weight, you're doing something wrong um, or need to visit your doctor because you're one of that 2% that has some sort of something going on with your health that you may not know about. Um, but oftentimes people jump to things like thyroid and stuff like that when in reality, nah, you just had four drinks too many wine this week and that's what did it. It's not your thyroid or you're overstressed. You're stressed to the nines and you haven't figured any, out any healthy ways to regulate your stress and that's what's preventing your fat loss. So, um, you know, don't be too quick to jump on the, 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 oh, it must be my thyroid or it must be, I must be sick. I must be dying because I can't lose weight. It, that's a very, very small, small, small portion of you. It would be some sort of serious health problem. And I don't want anyone to think that way. I want you to think, you know, it's probably something that I'm just doing in my life. That's the issue. Um, so, um, I often get asked about diets and I'm not a supporter of diets. Why am I not supporter of diets? Simply put is a diet is something that you go on and like anything that you can go on, eventually you go off. Um, so a diet doesn't usually um, – signify that you're going to be sticking with something for a long period of time. And diets, I find, are very restrictive. And I also don't believe in excessive restriction. I just don't believe in it. None of you should have to restrict yourself in an extreme manner in order to get the weight loss you desire and deserve. So I I, I don't recommend diets or diet plans, for that matter, for 98% of people. And I'm just throwing out the number 98% of people because it's the vast, vast majority that I don't re recommend diet plans and diets for. Um, what I do recommend is discovering and or creating strategies that work for you to achieve a healthy caloric deficit. So – the way I say it, the, if you can take it from that one sentence, there's no magic pill or magic bullet that is going to make you lose weight overnight or even in a week. And I'm going to tell you that. It just does not happen like that. It, that's not how our bodies work. Our bodies are smart. And in some cases, they outsmart – many cases, they outsmart us. We can't – We it's, it's hard to fool our bodies. They're very, very, very good at adapting. So we need to discover and create strategies that work for you in capitals because every single person is different in how they have to achieve their healthy caloric deficit. Now, I, I say healthy caloric deficit because an excessive or large caloric, de caloric deficit is, uh, to me, that is star that's starvation. 
that's restriction. And, and a huge caloric deficit um, is not recommended in the long run, and, and it won't. It's not sustainable. Um, you know, you're in an excessive caloric deficit if you are struggling severely, and none of you deserve to be struggling severely with that. Um, there is a minor amount of struggle that that anyone will have in fat loss, but I mean that severe severe psychological struggle that should not have to occur. Got, gang, we're going to continue talking about this when we get back from the break here on Modern Fitness. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a Renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAndAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. We are back live on Modern Fitness and I'm your host, Jonathan Els, and tonight we are talking about fat loss and mainly the strategies that we should use through nutrition to uh, encourage fat loss and to get the fat loss that we want and we desire. So as before the break, I was mentioning that in order to get fat loss, 98% of the time, a caloric deficit is the main factor. So eating fewer calories in a day than our body needs. Now, um, I also mentioned that I don't recommend diets uh, and diet plans for 98% of people. Uh, There's only a small, small, small minority of people that those are applicable to, in my opinion. Um, And you're going to find a growing number of nutrition coaches like myself, personal trainers, fitness coaches, etc., that uh, even dietitians or nutritionists that actually recommend diet plans that 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 road is is shrinking um, there's boulders and 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 fallen down trees in that road that are making it harder to be accessible these days some people still go there because they follow something simple and that thing they follow is not the success of their clients the thing they follow is called dollar signs the almighty dollar signs and uh Well, let's just say this. Um, The need for dollar signs does not outweigh the need to get my clients the results they deserve in the long run. So I will never go that route. So that's my my personal opinion. Uh, But there's a lot of studies behind um, achieving a maintainable uh, diet is the best way or a maintainable, healthy, nutritional outlook and balance in your life is the best way to go. So some simple tips. I mean, we've heard these things all before. This is just to, you know, just to get you warmed up. Some simple tips for fat loss uh, include uh, reducing liquid calories. And liquid calories 
or um, anything you consume that's fluid. So let's say juice, pop, aka soda in the states, um, uh, coffee drinks or tea drinks that have sugar and cream or milk in them. Um, alcoholic beverages are probably the biggest one, and um, those are all liquid calories. Anything you drink, even smoothies. Smoothies are a big one, actually. People often point the finger at alcohol. Um, but smoothies are one of those things that's often seen as a health food that can be contain more sugar and calories than an alcoholic beverage, but the person's blind to it or doesn't realize that. So we do have to definitely be careful when consuming uh, liquid calories because they can blow our fat loss efforts out of the water. And I don't want that to be the reason that you're not getting the results you want. So plain and simple, reducing liquid calories is the best place to start. Well, John, then what do I drink? Plain and simple, the simplest, most obvious thing you should drink is water. So if you simply swap one juice or one soda for water, you're making a massive difference in your day in terms of uh, liquid calories, especially sugar calories. Um, if you swap your um, medium double-double coffee for even down to a medium single-single, you're, sw- you're cutting significant calories out. Then even more so if you go to black coffee. All I drink is black Americano. That's what I drink all the time, black Americano. It's my favorite. I love the taste of, of the coffee. Um, I actually think the taste of coffee itself and sugar together is disgusting. I hate the taste of sweet coffee. It grosses me out. It really grosses me out. That's just a personal preference, but – um, let's say, for instance, like the average black coffee, medium black coffee is five to 10 calories, depending on the actual size of the cup. So it's nothing. You put some cream and sugar in there, boom, it's 250. So 300 even. Whipped cream, sprinkles, caramel chunks, 400, 500. It's easy. So just just be aware of that, guys. Um, now the other really obvious thing for, especially here in 2018, this is huge, reducing how many times per week that you eat out at restaurants or get takeout food and substituting that with making more food at home. This is very, 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 very obvious to some people, but to others, they don't want to sacrifice eating out at restaurants except they still want their fat loss. And I said, well, there's, I always tell them there's a give and a take. Like you want this fat loss. How bad do you want it? If you really want that fat loss, you're not going to eat takeout food every single day of the week. It just doesn't make sense. Not to mention your wallet's going to be fatter at the end of the week if you don't eat that takeout food. Um, so make more food at home, plain and simple. If you make a meal at home, I'm t- let me give you an example here. If you make at home, you make salmon filet, uh, roasted potatoes, and uh, asparagus. Let's just I'm just I just pull it off the top of my head. You make that meal at home, and then you eat that exact same meal of salmon filet, roasted potatoes and asparagus at a restaurant, the restaurant version of your exact meal will typically have up to as much as 40% more calories than the one you made at home. That is actually a fact. Uh, Restaurant calories can be inflated up to about 40%. The reason for, why do you think it tastes so good? Because they have more fats. They have more – the way they cook it, their cooking manners. Maybe they they, typically things are more fried or have more fat or more butter or more oils. And that makes them more tasty, often more cream. Things are mixed into potatoes, things like that. It's easy to inflate. So anyway, when it comes to talking about your fat loss, 98% of you – will achieve your success by falling into one of two big categories. 
And these are two categories, uh, strategies that are, are, that we can use to get you to get the results you want. And I have worked both of these categories and I actually bounce between both of them depending on how strict my goals are. So once again, 98% of people will fall into one of these two categories that will work for you. Oh, and we are going to discuss this when we get back from the break here on Modern Fitness. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. We are back on Modern Fitness and I am your host, Jonathan Ells. And uh, tonight we are discussing the some dietary strategies you can put in place for, for achieving your fat loss goals. Who does not want to be leaner? Even the fit people you see on TV and in movies. You think you think they they just walked into in front of a camera and looked that good? No. Everyone has to work for it. Everyone has to work for it. And in episode one, a couple about two and a half months back, we discussed uh, the exercise habits that are great. And today we're talking about the dietary habits that are great. So before the break, I mentioned that 98% of you will achieve fat loss success by doing one of two strategies. So there's, there's two main strategies that will work for 98% of people to achieve their fat loss. And you uh, will fall into a variation of one of them. Okay, These two strategies, these are the two strategies right here. Number one, educating yourself on nutrition and learning portion control methods. So number one is educating yourself on nutrition and learning portion control methods. And there's lots of different portion control methods, but I'm going to give you an example today that I love. Um, Strategy number two is educating yourself on nutrition and tracking food intake. So once again, number two is educating yourself on nutrition and tracking food intake. And there are many different ways to track food intake, but I'm going to talk about my favorite one today. So those are the two main strategies. Some of you may be like, oh, why didn't I think of that? Some of you may be like, oh, I've heard of that before. Well, it's not about reinventing the wheel here, guys. This is what works. You need to achieve a caloric deficit and you need to do so over an extended period of time. And that fad diet ain't cutting it. 
or for proper terms, is not working effectively for you. (laughs) So this is what we're going to do. We're going to discuss number one. Number one, educating yourself on nutrition and learning portion control methods. So as I said, there are many different methods of doing portion control. The least precise way to do portion control is the eyeball method which is pretty self-explanatory, the eyeball method is looking at your food and just kind of estimating portions roughly where you want them. So that might be like, well, I'm going to have a little bit less potatoes. I'm going to have a little bit more turkey. I'm going to have, uh, you know, this amount of carrots and Brussels sprouts. Uh, by the way, happy Thanksgiving there soon to all you Americans. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, anyway, um, Uh, that's the eyeball method. Now, that's the least precise, but it can still work for some of us. If the simple effect, the simple fact is, well, we know something like, well, we know something, let's make an obvious one. We know that something like ice cream has a lot of calories and ice cream itself isn't necessarily bad. It's just something that's easy to over con- over consume because it's so delicious. So yes, if we eat too much ice cream, we'll probably have a hard time losing weight. But can we lose weight and also eat some ice cream here and there? Absolutely, you can. You but you have to be, you have to learn how to uh, first off educate yourself on nutrition and also learn how to portion control that ice cream. So if you're to eyeball ice cream, it's easy to mess up because what is 300 calories and what is 500 almost look the same. So when you start getting into these foods that are higher caloric density, which means basically a lot of calories in a little portion like ice cream, it's easy to inflate your calories without even realizing it. So I actually uh, recommend the hand method. And it, the hand method is um, – was uh, to my knowledge, I learned it through Precision Nutrition, which is uh, what I'm certified as a Precision Nutrition coach. Um, and um, as a coach of Precision Nutrition, we learned this hand method. I'm going to discuss that in a second. But it's different for men and women. It's different for men and women. Yes, it's not a sexism thing. It's plain and simple that – Our bodies work differently. They work differently on this physiological level and we can't change that. So uh, for instance, like uh, my ex-girlfriend, I don't like talking about my ex-girlfriend, but this is a good example. My ex-girlfriend, she used to get angry when I ate bigger portions than her because she thought that our portions should always be equal because we should be equal. And I said, absolutely, I agree we should be equal. But in terms of what we are eating, if if we eat the equal amount, honey, we won't – you're not going to be happy in six months' time. The reason you're not going to be happy in six months' time is you're probably going to gain weight if you eat the same amount that I eat. And she didn't think that was fair. And I said, I didn't make this up. I'm 215 to 220 pounds – You're 135. We're two different size individuals. We have two different genetic codes. We have two different activity levels. I'm a personal trainer. You're also very active, but you're not quite as active as me. So um, she wasn't happy by that, but her goal was to actually lose weight, and my goal was actually to gain weight and gain strength. So um, we had to eat different amounts and it frustrated her. But I had to explain it to her that the reason why we're eating different different amounts is because there's genetic differences. We have differences in our goals and we have differences in our daily activity levels. And that, that that was plain and simple. That's how it is. So this is a common struggle that you may have at home with your spouse or with your girlfriend or boyfriend. And um that you think you should eat the same amount or your the, your significant other will d- dish you up the exact same amount that they have and question if you try to eat more or less. So it's good to get this understanding and it's good to be supportive for your spouse or your partner 
and that we don't always need to eat the same amount of food. We can eat the same types of foods, but the portions may be a little different based on our gender, our age, our genetics, our, our, our personal differences and goals and what we want to achieve. Maybe our partner wants to gain weight. Maybe we want to lose weight. Maybe they're trying to maintain. Maybe we're trying to lose. Uh, and different sizes of people. So these things, these differences simply do exist and they do factor in. So when we get back from the break, I'm going to explain how the precision nutrition hand method works and tell you how to use that method to make kick-ass weight loss results when we get back from the break here on Modern Fitness. Abuse happens every moment of every day. According to national statistics in the United States, every two minutes, someone is sexually assaulted, and every 10 minutes, a report of child abuse is made. Those currently struggling with abuse, or if you know someone who has been the victim of abuse, you are not alone. Whether physical, mental, emotional, or sexual, know there is hope, there is help, there is healing. Author Tammy Hall has written a book from her own account of abuse called Journey of Courage that can guide you through your own personal journey of healing. Stop struggling through life. It's your story. It's your healing. And it can begin with the first turn of the page. Visit www.journeyofcourage.com to begin your path to becoming the person you were ultimately created to be. Healed. Hopeful. Happy. Abuse. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. We are back on Modern Fitness, and I'm your host, Jonathan Ells, and um, we are going to briefly, uh, as I said, we're going to mention the hand measuring system, and this is what I learned through uh, my education as becoming a precision nutrition coach, um, and I say that funny. I know some people from the UK or from the States are going to say, well, how do you say coach? It sounds weird. Yeah, I'm a Canadian. And I'm an East Coaster Canadian, which is even more twangy. So um, anyway, this is how it works. And this is a great way to actually portion control. And Precision claims this is almost as accurate as calorie tracking. So this you do all this with your hand. Yes, with your hand. Um, so protein. Start with protein. Protein is is measured by the size of your palm. So if you look at your hand and you slice off your fingers and thumb, that's a serving of protein. So for a meal, and there are gender differences, women will typically have one palm-sized portion of protein, meat or fish, or meat substitute, and men will have two portions of that same amount of meat or fish or meat substitute. So um, that, that palm, the size of your palm, is a good estimate for how much protein you should have in every serving. So once again, women will typically have one. Men will typically have two. Um, and vegetables, vegetables are cre incredibly, incredibly important. Most people don't eat enough of them. Uh, is sometimes myself by the end of the day, I'm like, holy crap, I only had X number of servings today. I need X number. So at the end of the day, I like pound back a whole bunch of green beans or Brussels sprouts or spinach. Um, 
But anyway, vegetables are measured by a closed fist. Fist. So a closed fist, I mean, basically, if you were going to punch someone, that's your closed fist. Um, that's how we measure vegetables. It's a pretty big serving. Women typically have one closed fist, and men typically have two closed fist portions of vegetables with every meal. All right, carbohydrates. You know, carbs, those things that people say are like little monsters that run under the bed that attach their abdomen at, at nighttime. <laughs> That's not true, but carbs, potatoes, rice, pasta, bread, etc., uh, fruits, um, are measured with a cupped hand. So a cupped hand, so basically if you cup your hand, like as if you're trying to fill it with fluid or water, and you take a look at that space, that's one serving of carbohydrates. So not up to the tip of your finger, not till it's spilling over the side, but the little crevice in the middle that you create, that's one serving of carbohydrates. Um, women should typically have one cupped hand in general, whereas men typically have two cupped hands for every meal. Um, and if you look at that and you're like, holy crap, that's, you know, two of that or one of that's a serving of my pasta. I'm eating like 10 of that in a serving. Well, that may be a contributing factor for why you have a hard time losing the fat that you want. Now, fats, fats, fats themselves, such as oils, cheeses, um, butter, margarine, um, fatty foods such as uh, you know, like fish fats um, or like other types of fats, olives, olive oils, things like that. Fats are measured with your thumb. So fats are measured with your thumb. And you can look at if you put your thumb up like you're giving someone's a thumbs up, basically from where the top of your hand cuts. If you were to cut your thumb straight off, not from the base, but where it levels with the top of your hand. That's how much approximately, if you were to eyeball, how much fat you have in, in each meal. So women will typically have one thought, thumb size serving of fat, whereas uh, men will have two. Now, um, if you look at your, the size of your thumb, if you just snip it off from the top of your hand, and if you think about that being your serving of cheese, um, well, I can tell you this, especially in North American culture – um, I've never, I haven't spent enough time in, in other parts of the world to be able to tell how the cheese servings are there. But I tell you one thing in North America, we go stupid with cheese. So that thumb, one to two of those thumbs is a silly small amount for what most people eat. And then they wonder why they can't lose weight. Well, <laughs> that's just how it is. But no pun intended, this is just a rule of thumb. Every person is different. So once again, protein, the size of your palm, vegetables, a closed clenched fist, carbohydrates, a cupped hand, and fats, a thumb. And now everyone's different. Now there's, there, there's lots of reasons we can change this. There's, there's, um, there's several reasons we may change this. Number one, you're just a small person. So in other words, you're small in stature. You're not a big person. You may have to drop down slightly. Um, maybe you have a, a work or lifestyle that allows you to eat more or less frequently. And this is based on a three, three meal a day uh, portion size. So if you eat more frequently, you may have to shrink those portions. If you eat less frequently, you may have to increase them slightly. And um, that's another factor that we have to consider. Another one is that we've stalled in our fat loss efforts. So in other words, we're doing this, but we've stalled in our fat loss. We haven't lost fat in more than, let's say, on average, two weeks. So it's been two weeks and we haven't even lost a quarter of a pound. So then we have to make some modifications. And last but not least is um, – if you are an inactive person, you may have to eat slightly smaller than this. So if you're an inactive person or a person that doesn't want to do a lot of exercise, you can still achieve the fat loss you want, but you just have to modify these meals a little more. So how we start 
is we start by slightly decreasing your portion size. And typically when we decrease our portion size, we take that portion away from either fat and or carbohydrate at one meal a day and work from there. So once again, we take we decrease the, por- the portion size of fat and or carbs at one meal a day and work from there. Gang, we're going to talk about the second big strategy when we return from the break here on Modern Fitness. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Are you looking for employment and live in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is the place for you. Are you an employer looking to fill a position or quite a few positions in Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties? Jobs Annex is for you. Employers, JobsAnnex.com is your resource for career-minded people. JobsAnnex.com is the convenient place for job seekers and employers to hook up and move forward. Jobs Annex has been serving Los Angeles, Orange, Riverside, and San Bernardino counties for over 14 years. Jobs Annex is a former employment search firm. We've evaluated many thousands of resumes and we understand what employers want and what job applicants need to be successful in their interviews. At Jobs Annex, we provide you with the tools to tell your story for free. Our resources at JobsAnnex.com will help each applicant construct an award-winning resume, an eye-catching cover letter, and key interview questions to ask in various types of interviews. Best of all, it's free. JobsAnnex.com. That's J-O-B-S-A-N-N-E-X.com. We are back on Modern Fitness, and I'm your host, Jonathan Ells, and tonight we are talking about fat loss. This is part two of fat loss, and these are the nutritional strategies you can take to ensure that you're going to get your fat loss. And uh, we just uh, I just discussed through in the last two segments strategy number one. Now we're going to discuss strategy number two. Strategy number two is a natural progression to strategy number one. If you are not satisfied or you're not getting the results you want and you want to try a different strategy. Now, this one takes it a little bit further. It's slightly more intensive. Okay. This strategy is educating yourself on nutrition and tracking your food intake. Now, people say, oh, my God, John, food tracking what are you trying to get me to do? Like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to, like, John, that, oh, no. I'm not telling anyone what to do. By no means. I'm putting two options on a silver platter, and I'm just getting you guys to sniff out which option on the silver platter smells the best for you. That's it. So this strategy number two is educate yourself on nutrition and track your food intake. Now, to some of us, it may seem extreme, but I will tell you this. It is more typically more precise than just doing portion control methods. Yes, it is more intense than doing portion control methods, but it is also more precise. That also being said, it is still not perfect. Um... And for example, like errors in logging or tracking our food are very, very, very common. It's too easy to make an error when we log or track our food. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about calorie counting or macronutrient splits or anything like that. I'm just talking about tracking what you are eating. 
so it becomes aware to you. Write it down, log it in things like uh, an app like MyFitnessPal. I highly recommend MyFitnessPal, especially if you're in North America because all of our foods are on there, especially in the United States. Um, you can just scan the barcode of whatever food you're eating or search you know, boneless, skinless chicken breast and boom, it pops up. And all you have to do is uh, figure out how many grams or ounces or milliliters or whatever you have. So, um, but that, that being said, food errors in logging food are common. So uh, even calories and macronutrients on food packaging itself, they're not 100% accurate. Because in, in most food items, there's no way to precisely tell how many calories are in that food. Uh, we have scientists who who analyze the food, and, and but those are still – they're still approximations. It's close estimates, but they're still approximations because there are differences in our food from region to region, from different places of the world, from different um, – um, spe- like I don't want to say sp- the word species, but s- like you know, let's say like you know, a food in one part of the world or one area of the country can be different than another country or a, a version of that country or area of that country, uh, based on climates and soils and how it's the food is is either raised or grown. Um, so there's so many there's so many variables there. Let me give you an example. One of my favorite foods ever. One of the most healthy foods that we can possibly eat. Uh, high in fiber, high in nutrients, vitamins and minerals. High in antioxidants. That food is called blueberries. I love them. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I have to gauge how much money I spend on blueberries and other berries like raspberries and blackberries because I eat them too quickly. So one of those little containers, I'll eat that in like 30 seconds without breathing. So, uh, uh, but for instance, using blueberries as, as an example, some blueberries have more or less sugar than others. So there's different varieties of blueberries, so they're not all created equal. And also, there's slight variances in vitamin content. Now, generally, blueberries have this much of this vitamin and this much sugar and this much fiber, but there are some regional differences. And it depends, you know, where your um, your blueberries are grown, and if you know, maybe if they're organic or not. Um, there's going to be differences in in, in um, or how fast they're grown. There's going to be differences in nutritional content. So you're going to see the words when you when you educate yourself on nutrition. And as I said, for both of these strategies, the first half of the strategy is educate yourself on nutrition. So there's going to be words that you're going to see over and over again, like estimate or approximate or approximately. So you're going to see approximately quite often. Uh, or you'll see on a nutrition label, you see that little squiggly, that little squiggly, which means approximately. So a lot of this stuff is just approximations. Regardless, that's enough about that. I'm not going to beat that, that horse to death. Um, Regardless, this is still the most accurate method. It's more accurate than the eyeball method. It's more accurate than the portion control method. So if you are dead serious about fat loss or failed using portion control, this is the best method for you to ensure the best results. So speaking from experience and with my clients, there is a huge benefit to this method that I call the oh shit realization. So this is when we have we have moments where we realize that a food or a meal that we've been eating has way more calories than we thought. And then we go, oh, shit. And we realize that our perception was distorted. So our perception of how many calories that food had had was distorted. And, you know, personally, I think this was a very valuable, valuable experience to myself when I tracked uh, for two months over the summer. I realized a whole lot of things I was eyeballing, I was eyeballing wrong or was turning a blind eye to or making an excuse to. So, gang, we're going to continue discussing this when we get back from the break here on Modern Fitness. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? 
Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends. International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866 244 5679 and feel the glory. We are back on Modern Fitness, and I'm your host, Jonathan Ells, and tonight we are live. We are discussing fat loss, and uh, quickly here, guys, this is the last little bit I have for you tonight to do with our strategy number two, which is uh, tracking what you eat. So, as I mentioned, (laughs) the oh shit realization. I made that up myself. I might fine-tune it over time, inevitably, but basically that's when you start tracking your food and you realize, holy crap, I had a distorted view of how many calories or how many sugar or how many fat or how many whatever this food had or this meal had. So personally, even if you don't believe in tracking what you eat, uh, recording what you eat, either on paper or in something like My Fitness Pal. I believe that it is a very valuable experience to anyone to do it for, you know, four weeks or so to realize if you have any distortions in what you believe you are eating. So, for example, I've gotten food journals before where, like, people write on paper or type it up. Um, people say things like a sprinkle of cheese. <laughs> what? What is a sprinkle of cheese? Tell me, can, can you quantify what a sprinkle of cheese is? Is that if you take your thumb and your index finger and you grab cheese and you sprinkle it on something? Or is it all of your fingers and your thumb all at once, how much you can sprinkle on something? Is a sprinkle of cheese, is that a mythical amount of cheese that the cheese fairy comes and drops on your food before you eat it? What the hell is a sprinkle of cheese? I don't know. Um, This is a common problem that people have that are poor at portion controlling. So if 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 you suck at portion controlling, and I often say it's a little bit delusioned. In other words, you're... The reality and what you believe, there's a large separation between those two things. What I find is the sprinkle of cheese type people are the most separated from what the actual reality of the calories in that food are. That's where the education of nutrition comes in. This is why I always say educate, 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 learn, 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 guys, learn. Um, So a sprinkle of cheese can be easily several hundred calories. Otherwise known as you not getting the results that you desire. Plain and simple. That sprinkle of cheese could be screwing you up. So uh, just it's good not to just be randomly guessing on things like that. So 
those are the two main methods. Once again, the two main methods are number one, educating yourself on nutrition and learning portion control methods. Or number two, educating yourself on nutrition and tracking food intake. So the thing, main thing you really need to know here is regardless of which method you use, you need to pay attention to your results and then tweak as you go. So pay attention to your results. Listen to your body. Listen to your body. Then tweak as you go. Um, here's a big recommendation. Please allow, honestly, please allow 30 days to be able to tell if your dietary changes are working. So often I'll have uh, people ask me questions. That they, they, they'll, they'll, try to, they'll try to change something a week after they changed it initially. That's not enough time to see if your body's responding. Please allow 30 days to tell if your dietary changes are working how you want them. Um, if you change them more frequently than that, then you're going to, you might get obsessive and might start getting to a psychological or emotional game. I do not want that for any of you. So the key here is to learn, educate yourself and what work, find out what works for your body. So thanks again for tuning in tonight's episode, uh, fat loss part two here on modern fitness. Uh, if you have any questions or comments on tonight's episode, you can reach out to me on Instagram at symbol Jonathan dot or on Facebook, Jonathan dot or via email, Jonathan dot one at gmail.com. Next week, we are going to be talking about how to build a better butt. That's right. Booty building part one is next week. I hope every single one of you tunes, every single one of you tunes into next week. Thanks again, guys. Good night here on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. You've been listening to Modern Fitness with Jonathan Ells. No matter your experience level, Jonathan is here to help you crush your goals. Get it all here each week on Modern Fitness. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company. 